Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Spiroff from Conifer Radio, and I'm the guy that's got a face for radio, but please bear with me tonight because it's a pleasure to welcome you tonight. We have a full show, and we hope you enjoy our time together. For the next few minutes, we're going to have a special treat for you to enjoy while you folks sign in to watch. And then we'll get right into our program and make sure you have your party box ready. Our silent auction is open, so check out the great items for sale. And without further ado, we have a special performance from Tunisia, the band that's played for our gala for many years. Thank you, Mark, and thank all of you for joining us tonight. Although Tunisia cannot be there with you live, we did want to share some footage of a never-seen-before concert filmed this past summer at Crescent Park. We're honored to be a part of the annual fundraising efforts for Mount Evans. The in-home health care and end-of-life services provided by the team to the community are essential. We thank you. face and hand.
Damn TV lane. You feeling all right? <laughs> We're gonna take y'all back. <laughs> back to bell bottles and that bros. I had mine. <laughs> Second. Oh, baby, give me. 
Get those hands clapping. Come on. out there, I can hear him. I can hear him. Keep it going. It's Mark from Conifer Radio, your MC for the special evening, and welcome to the Mount Evans 40th Birthday in a Box Gala. This is our evening to celebrate the birth and the growth of Mount Evans Home and Healthcare and Hospice, and to raise money. We want to raise money to support the mission well into the future. We are here in the studio with Mount Evans President and CEO, Carrie Yeager, and our favorite auctioneer, Mr. Jim Burtz. Plus, we have Doug Spencer, our current board chair, joining us from Arizona. Doug? Good evening, everyone. My name is Doug Spencer, and I am currently the chair of the board of Mount Evans Home Health and Hospice. We're here tonight to celebrate 40 years of amazing history of the organization and all of the great care that we have provided to this community. We're also here to pay tribute to Susan Stearns, longtime board member and donor to Mount Evans. We have a great show lined up tonight. Thank you very much for all of your support, and uh, have a good time. Thanks, Doug, and thank you to all who have joined us this evening. During our time together, our Mount Evans family, the staff, the community members, will share with you moments in time that helped to shape Mount Evans into this caring, compassionate, high-quality healthcare agency that you know today. Mr. Burtz, Jim, our auctioneer, will lead us through a special appeals to support the Mount Evans mission of caring for all in our community, regardless of their ability to pay. Then this uh, evening, Tunisia will wrap up the uh, event with a special concert. Our silent and live auctions are open now, so feel free to take a look and bid. After bidding closes at 8 p.m., Jim will tell us more about some of the additional live items that we have available. And also, a huge shout out to our sponsors for tonight for underwriting our production. Now, sit back and relax and enjoy what we have in store for you. We are most grateful that 
if you have taken the time on a Friday to join us during this evening from across the country. It's because you are here and because you are Mount Evans that our heart is in the home. Carrie? Thank you, Mark. And thank all of you for joining us this evening. One of our traditions at Mount Evans is to begin our board of director meetings with a mission moment, sharing a powerful story that connects us to our mission, serving our mountain communities by providing compassionate and experienced care during challenging times. Because this is our commitment, we are able to help families make forever memories like this one. One of my most proud moments was when I was taking care of a gentleman who was dying of pancreatic cancer and his daughter was going to school with my son. So we'd known each other for a very long time. She was graduating from high school and he really wanted to see her graduate and we didn't think he was gonna make it that far. So I called the high school and we got the principal to come and do the graduation in their living room. It was also the wife's birthday that day, um, and the graduation happened, and the birthday party happened, and 24 hours later, he passed away. It was a moment that I feel like I made a real difference in their lives so that those girls could remember their father, and he was there at a uh, monumental moment in time. Thank you, Terry, for dedicating to quality patient care as you always do day in and day out at Mount Evans and sharing this story with us this evening. Stories like this inspire our every day at Mount Evans Home Healthcare and Hospice. Our independent nonprofit healthcare agency has been caring for the mountain communities of Colorado's foothills since 1980. Today, we provide home health care, palliative care, hospice care, and emotional support for those who are grieving, caregiving, and adjusting to a serious illness. Camp Comfort, our bereavement camp for children who have lost a loved one, offers counseling and support and networking every summer for the past 25 years. And last year, our clinicians performed over 25,000 patient visits in the face of a global pandemic. I've seen such strength and love from our staff and they have stepped up to take care of patients and families consistently with high quality care and compassion, despite obstacles and uncertainty. The fear that they may walk into a home with COVID is real, yet they are gearing up and they're going in because that's who they are and that's the culture we nurture at Mount Evans. Without question, the COVID crisis has confirmed the quality of the people in our care team and it has illuminated just how important in-home care will continue to be moving forward. So as we gather this evening to celebrate 40 years of caring, I would love to share with you some of the milestones of our history that have shaped Mount Evans to ensure the care of the community into our future. And who better to start the story than Carol Linke, our founder and first executive director of Mount Evans in 1980, Carol? I decided to start Mount Evans Hospice because there was a need and because when my father died, we weren't allowed to even come in and say goodbye to him. We also had a gentleman who he and his wife had helped the twin uh, through hospice alone without any help. And he came to us and said, I will give you $5,000 seed money to get the hospice off the ground because we don't ever want to have to do it alone. This lady had diabetes and shingles both, which is a terrible conglomerate. And uh, the nurse had promised that she would come up over Thanksgiving and change the bandages for her. And so when it came time for Thanksgiving, the snow was so bad, the girl couldn't get her car anywhere near Idaho Springs. So she got on her horse and packed everything up and went up there and changed her bandages and brought her a Thanksgiving dinner. 
and then came back home on her horse. We had a hot dog wagon that we would take out on the weekends. It was called Maude Evans hot dog wagon, I guess. I can't remember. It was an old shepherd's wagon. And uh, some of the volunteers painted it uh, and made it look like a traveling uh, selling vehicle. And we took it every weekend to all the different uh, uh, shows around town. That I, I can't tell you how pleased I am to hear how well the staff and the volunteers are doing and how incredibly surprised I am at the amount of, of uh, patients you're taking care of. From the grapevine, I've heard your quality of care is just extraordinary. And I'd just like to thank you all for keeping the quality of care going the way we wanted it to. And to thank you all for uh, doing what you're doing, especially today, raising money to keep things going. And uh, I just don't know what else to say other than what a pleasure it is to be associated with a group like this. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Serving our community for the last 40 years has been a remarkable and joyful journey. We've created a montage of memories that we think you'll enjoy. Mount Evans has realized many achievements in our 40 years of caring. I would like to share a few of these milestones with you that reflect the growing, loving relationship between Mount Evans and the community we serve. To begin, Carol Linke moved to Evergreen in 1979, bringing with her an appreciation of the hospice movement. When a local resident needed hospice care, she held a meeting in Evergreen Lutheran Church and on November 12, 1980, Mount Evans Hospice was born and operated out of Carol's basement. Carol, our first executive director, was a pioneer. She created Mount Evans Hospice before hospice was a recognized paid benefit by Medicare. Carol and her cadre of volunteers provided care to this community without reimbursement for two years, dependent upon our community for support. Our first Freedom Run was held on July 4, 1982, increasing the awareness and raising funds for Mount Evans. Mount Evans was a leader in home care development, adding home health care to hospice services in the mid-1980s. These services included a full complement of therapies and counseling to meet the growing needs. Medicare added the hospice benefit in 1983, and within two years, Mount Evans was certified to provide hospice and home health care for Medicare. This enabled Mount Evans to begin to receive government payment for services. In 1985, Carol Linke decided to advance her career, and Louisa Walters was appointed executive director. Louisa brought experience and vision to Mount Evans, developing this agency as the premier hospice and home health care provider to our mountain communities. Louisa spearheaded our first dinner dance, now called our Benefit Gala, held on February 7, 1987. The theme was Dixieland Jazz, and entertainment was provided by the Queen City Jazz Band. Our community helped raise funds, an outpouring of love and support, to fulfill our mission, which continues today. In 1993, the Angel Project began as a special way to remember and honor loved ones during the holiday season. Each year, a special group of volunteers, known as Angel Makers, gather in a quilting bee-like atmosphere to lovingly handcraft angels. This has been a tradition for 27 years, sharing soup, stories, laughter and hugs, and supporting Mount Evans. In the summer of 1995, 30 children attended the debut weekend of Camp Comfort. Camp Comfort offers children ages 6 to 12 who have lost a loved one, a supportive environment with counselors and volunteers, working with youth to gain the understanding of grief and loss. Its current location, the Easter Seals Camp in Georgetown, is the perfect spot to balance fun and learning. In 2009, Louisa Walters retired after 24 years of service and Kathy Engel was appointed executive director. Kathy brought clinical expertise and a vision for the future. She is an innovator, piloting telehealth and expanding services to meet growing needs. In 2011, the Brick Memorial Program was launched. 
The Brick Fundraising Program is a wonderful opportunity to honor and remember those we love while supporting our important mission that touches so many lives in the mountain communities. In 2013, Mount Evans recognized the need for expanded community care and added palliative care to its array of services. The goal of palliative care is to improve quality of life through treatment delivered in the comfort of your home. In 2014, Mount Evans was nationally recognized for our first of eight consecutive years ranking in the top 25% or better of home health care agencies across the country. We are proud exceeding others in quality care, patient experience, and financial performance. In 2015, Kathy Engel resigned to explore professional opportunities and Charlie Shemansky joined Mount Evans as president and CEO. Charlie brought data management and financial expertise to carve a path of sustainability for Mount Evans. Along our 40-year journey, our communities have supported Mount Evans through sharing their time and talent, volunteering, and gifts to ensure that we are here when our residents need us most. It's a wonderful relationship. In 2020, Charlie Shemansky stepped down and Carrie Yeager, Senior Director of Clinical Services, was promoted to Mount Evans President and CEO. Carrie leading us through the pandemic provides a renewed engagement of staff and our communities in Mount Evans' future. Throughout the years, we are honored to be recognized as a high quality organization with drive, determination, and vision that is making Colorado's mountain communities a better place to live. Our greatest achievement is in making meaningful difference in the lives of our patients. Mount Evans staff often enter an individual's life when they are most vulnerable. We bring our skill and sensitivity through the front door and make their days richer, warmer, and more meaningful. Although the rate of change in healthcare is relentless, what has not changed, nor will it ever change, is our heart and commitment to serving our neighbors in the mountain communities. Past and present come together too in this next Mission Moment snapshot. We don't just take care of patients. We take care of the whole house. I right now have the privilege of taking care of a couple. They are an absolute love story. Their love affair is palpable. And he's dying. We spent the whole summer out on their deck. So we were sitting there one day and she is gorgeous. She is just such a beautiful, beautiful woman. And I said, can I take your picture? And then here we are at Christmas time. He has no short term memory at all. And I said, I had this beautiful picture of Merritt. I remember so many times this summer sitting out on the deck, you telling me that she is the most beautiful woman you had ever met. And he looked at me, he said, and she still is. <laughs> I said, yes, she is. And I just thought it would be really cool if you wanted to give it to her for Christmas. And he was so pleased and so excited. On the slide to her, I said, please don't let him forget to give this to you for Christmas tomorrow. And of course, he totally forgot, bless his heart. But to the next morning, she told me that she said, you know, Don, here's this bag that you and Julie had. What, what is this? And he had no idea. And so he took it and he opened it and he saw it was this beautiful framed picture of her. And he keeps it sitting on the piano where he can see it all day long. She told me the story and she said, Julie, she said, the gift wasn't for me to have it. The gift was for me to enjoy how much he loves looking at it all day long. Oh my gosh, I had it backwards, but this was so good. <laughs> That's their love story, that kind of thing. Hey, Carrie, thank you very much for sharing that special story. And thanks to all of you who've been involved in the last 40 years in the growth of this truly special organization. Tonight, we're celebrating each of those 40 years of caring. And we're celebrating the hundreds of individuals and families served. 
And we're celebrating Mount Evans' commitment to being each and every home when needed across our mountain community. Because of social distancing, this next part of the evening's gala has been delivered to you in advance. So we hope that you fill that glass that you found in your birthday in a box kit and will now raise it in a special toast. And Carrie and Jim are going to join me. Here. Folks, we are socially distant here. And so we ask that you now uh, look, at, look in your box and that you notice you've, you've received a dessert. Two candles and a match. This is a group exercise, folks. Place both candles in your dessert and we ask you to light them. One candle represents the past 40 years and the other represents the next 40. So now we're gonna raise a glass, we're gonna to toast socially distantly with a cheer to the next 40. So Jim, Carrie, cheers. Cheers, cheers to everyone. Cheers, cheers to you. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! And now that we've raised our glasses, let's raise some money for Mount Evans because every dollar given will support our mission of serving the mountain communities and the greater the giving, the better we'll be able to provide compassionate and experienced care during these challenging times. Carrie? <coughs> Thank you, Mark. Although we cannot gather in person tonight, we are very much together, and the Mount Evans family is grateful for your support. Our heart is in the home, and always and every day. We now have a few more special stories to share about people in your community and very likely in your own circle. The first is one about a dear patient and honorary board member, Susan Stearns. I've known Sue for probably around 40 years now, so I've known her since we were just babes almost. <laughs> I knew Sue by reputation as a wonderful community activist, but um, when I got a call from Susan Stearns, I thought, ooh, I've come up in the world. It's one of those rare things where the first time you meet somebody, you come out that evening and go, on, boy, we just clicked, and we've been, we've been friends ever since. When it comes to Mount Evans, you know, there are those who come in and make the angels. There are those who will drive caregivers and patients to doctor's appointments, uh, out for groceries. There are those who then serve on a board and do all the attendant duties of a board member. Sue has done it all, and she's never asked for anything in return. She just wants to make this a better community and make some people in need a little luckier than they would otherwise be. I think her kindness and generosity have allowed Mount Evans to realize and live up to its core mission of caring. You know, she's got such a huge heart and it's such a genuine heart for um, how she relates to people, how she wants to help, how she wants to be involved. One vision I have of Sue is the lovely, beautiful duck swimming on a pond. On the surface, calm, under control, but paddling a mile a minute to get the job done. So she portrays a sense of calm while she's absolutely committed to the task. You know, the courage, the grace, and even the sense of humor that she's displaying during this just incredibly hard transition in her life, um, it truly is inspiring to me. I, I feel like um, she's teaching us all just exactly how a person can fully live even in the face of death. I uh, had been out running an errand and he had not having a good good day after a year of COVID, feeling very sorry for myself, woe is me. And as I turned the corner to my house, I see Sue and her husband, Frank. Frank was with her and carrying her oxygen tank. So I stopped and we had a brief conversation about how she was doing. And I looked at her and thought, she is absolutely glowing, glowing with happiness. So I got home and I said to my husband, I said, I just uh, learned something again. We can all choose our happiness. We can choose how we get through life, how we deal with upset things that happen in life. 
and she's just the inspiration for that right now. We have been blessed to know Susan, both personally and professionally at Mount Evans. Susan spent over 30 years dedicated to our mission and our community work. She is an honorary board member, and she will always be a member of our Mount Evans family. Because we are also honored to have taken care of her in her time of greatest need, she asked that we share her story from the patient perspective tonight. A year ago, I thought I was king of the world. I had retired and I had started skiing on weekdays, which is a nice thing. I um, was planning on golfing during weekdays. I was looking forward to the next 10 years. I went in for a scan and when I did it, the scan lady um, started out in the upper quadrant and kind of went along, it's going click, 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 click. And all of a sudden, she's down in here and it started clicking like crazy when they get into this part. And so I figured that I was had something pretty bad going on. And they put this poor little PA, um, he was maybe about 26, 27, and um, told him to go tell me that I was uh, pretty sick and gonna die. I think that was probably the hardest day for me. Going from thinking we were trying an aggressive approach to being a caregiver where the focus is on the quality of the end of life. But um, within one week of her diagnosis, um, staff from Mount Evans were here helping to explain the services that were available and it was really quite incredible. When I first realized that I would have to go in and take care of Susan Stearns, I was very nervous. She means so much to our community and to her friends and to her family, and her life has been all about service to others. And I don't feel like her cancer diagnosis has stopped that mission of hers. She continued to serve her community by putting her time and energy into the nonprofit organizations that she loves here. I told her that when it's her time to go, that I want her to be my guardian angel so that she can continue to help me show that grace to my patients and their family members. <laughs> the care from Christine is such a comfort. There's so much going on here, and so the Mount Evans part has been really, really nice. Little by little, I learned how important home health is. It's allowed me to do so many things that I wouldn't otherwise do, like go out and play golf. My brother came, my nieces came. It was amazing to have these relationships. The other thing is that we've been able to have her at home. You know, if she had been debilitated to the point where she needed to be in a nursing facility and we'd not been able to see her because of COVID, that would have been really awful. Frank and I see Susan have good hours every day. You know, there's some challenging bits every day, but I think because of Mount Evans, because of the hospice approach, every day has meaning for her and me and for Frank. I've been an elder law attorney forever. I've watched how people react in these situations. And in my case, I figured I'm going to die at some point. I've led a pretty good life. I've made lots of friends, gotten to know lots of people. And um, I think I've learned that Evergreen and Mount Evans have meant so much to me in the last 30 years. This is a very giving community, a very artsy community, a very emphatic community. And I've really uh, enjoyed being here so much.
Wow, thank you, Carrie, for sharing that story. You can just feel the love for Susan through these tributes, and you can see how different, in an uplifting way, her life story ended because Mount Evans was with her every step of the way. As Susan's family says so beautifully, the very presence of guardian angels from your hospice team gave them the gift of time, time for the everyday conversations and connections that give life its meaning. And our hospice team was so honored to serve Susan, who dedicated so much of her life to serving others. And with that powerful example of caring fresh in our minds, it reminds us why we're here tonight, which is to raise funds for Mount Evans. So we're going to start with our first of two paddle raises tonight. The idea behind the paddle raises is to get as many people as possible involved in giving at levels of giving that are right for you individually because it's all about the cumulative effect of what we can make happen here tonight. So first off, I just want to remind everyone that AES is sending you a text that will direct you to the donation levels. So look for that text. Everybody out there in virtual land, look for that text. Now remember folks, whether you're giving $100 or $500 or $10,000, remember that every single donation is equal in its merit because it's what comes out of your head and out of your heart that truly matters. That's why each donation is equal in its merit. So we're gonna get started with our first of two paddle raises tonight, our greatest need paddle raise donation. We're gonna start off with a level of giving of $10,000. If $10,000 is the right level of giving for you, please at this time, use those mobile devices and get ready to make a donation. And as I'm just finding out right now, we actually have not a 10, but a $20,000 donation. A $20,000 donation. Yes, that is unbelievable. That's incredible. So here we go, folks. $10,000, just to let you know, $10,000 provides care and comfort to our family. As, as loved ones make their final journeys. So here we go, $10,000. The next level of giving is $5,000. $5,000 can help a stroke victim re learning to walk and talk again. And as we can see, by the way, we did get a $10,000 donation from Ginny Addis. Yes, thank you, Ginny. $10,000 donation, a $5,000 donation. We have a $5,000 donation from Barbara. Barbara Zendig, $5,000. We've got a second $5,000 donation from an anonymous source. We're now gonna move on to $2,500. If $2,500 is the right level of giving for you, please, at this time, make that donation. It looks like Corey, Corey Freyer. Corey has made a donation for $2,500. And it looks like Alita, Alita Karen Smith has made a donation for $2,500. Just to let you know, this $2,500 donation provides home health care for two patients for five days. That's the impact that you can have at the $2,500 donation they're still coming in. Allison Gottsman and Bob Gottsman, the Gottsmans, $2,500. And there's a donation from Jim, Jim Chittix, Jim Chittix, $2,500 donation. Now remember, folks, you can make a donation at any level that you're comfortable with at any time. These are suggested levels. So we're going to go to $1,000. If $1,000 is the right level for you, please, at this time, make that donation. I see Ken and Kurt Yeager. Ken and Kurt Yeager, $1,000. I see Marsha Henderson, Marsha Henderson, $1,000. Penny Simpson, Penny Simpson, $1,000. Pamela, Pamela has just made a, Pamela Raitan has just made a donation for $1,000. The Scripps, Barb and Tom Scripps, $8,000 donation. Thank you so much. So as you can see, we've got some momentum, momentum going. We just received another $2,500 donation. We just received another $1,000 donation from Trisha Rosenthal. Keep these donations coming, folks. We're going to keep moving on. We're going to move to $500. Now, remember, if I go past your level, keep donating. See, Charlie, Charles Stearns just donated $1,000. You can go circle back to previous levels. Even though we're moving on, you can go back to those levels and make those donations. So right now, $500. How about Gail Sharp, $500? Catherine Hassel, $500. Susan, $500. Michael McHale, $500. Laura, $500. Walter and Susan Blake, $500. Renee, $500. William Dixon, $500. They're coming in. Folks, we're building some momentum tonight. 
The Crocs, Ray and Bill Crock. $500 donation, yes! They're coming, Rob Baker. Rob Baker, $500 donation. So keep it going, folks. We're now gonna move to $200. Woo, $200, I see them coming in. I'm only gonna go to a first name basis because they're coming in hot and heavy. So we've got Kathleen, we've got Adrian, we've got Pat, we've got Wendy, we've got Sally, we've got Dina, we've got Ron and Sandy Sherbert, we've got Joe, we've got Valerie, we've got Robert, we've got Michael, we've got Holly Jorgensen and Doug Kinsey, we've got Randall, we've got Susan, we've got Phil, we are rolling tonight. That's what it's all about. It's all about the community coming together and making these donations because it's all about the cumulative effect. I see another $1,000 donation just came in. Kathy and Mark, $1,000. So there you go. That's what we're talking about. You can make a donation at any level when you're ready to make that donation. We're going to go to $100. I'll call out some of the $100. We've got Wendy. We've got Lisa. We've got Kathleen. We've got Laura. We've got Pam. We've got Leonor. We've got Warner. We've got Hank. We've got Marilyn. We've got Theodore. Lori, Mary, Mag, Pam. We are rolling. These are $100 donations. They're raining down. This is awesome. This is so incredible. Keep those donations coming. Now, remember, folks. You're going to have until 5 p.m. tomorrow night to keep these donations coming. But make them hard. Right now, you see Karen and Mark. Karen and Mark just donated another $200 donation. So thank you so much, folks. Keep that going. And you know what? Everybody at home, if you can, you should all stand up and give yourselves a big cheer and a big round of applause because we are raising money tonight. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'll tell you what, we're now going to move on with our program. But remember, at any point, you can still be making these donations. All right, so here we go. Here is another mission moment. Carrie and the staff would like to share with you now. A patient that came to mind when I was thinking about this was a 39-year-old woman who came to us. She had been diagnosed with a malignant melanoma on her foot, of all things that had metastasized throughout her body. And unfortunately, she was recently divorced and had three little girls. So when we met her, she was moved in with her parents, uh, disbelieving that she had this terminal diagnosis. And she was surrounded by a, a seven-year-old, a six-year-old, and a three-year-old who were all, had no idea of what was going on with mom. One of the things she really wanted was for the girls to remember her. So someone had the bright idea to have each child have a Build-A-Bear. They had developed the capacity to insert in each bear a recording device so that the mother could actually record her voice. One of the uh, aunts brought the girls down to the Build-A-Bear shop and I met them there and the girls took them back home and the mom was able to record a message for each child in that so that the girls could always remember her voice. And then she was able to pass away in her parents' home uh, with the daughters there, but with us then helping keep her comfortable and also providing support to her parents and these little girls. It's profoundly moving. Um, it, as, a, as a mother, it's really hard to see another mother die. But we really did phenomenal work, and I'm really proud of what we were able to do for that family. Because of caregivers like Wendy, the families served by Mount Evans are able to find meaning and find ways to move forward. Take a look at the good work being done through Camp Comfort. I'm Betsy Hayes, and I'm the development director at Mount Evans. Part of my job is to call donors and thank them for their financial gifts to Camp Comfort. This fall, some of the comments that I heard were, I donate because I sent three kids to Camp Comfort when their mom died, and it put them on a path to success in school and life. I also heard, I donate because my dad died when I was six, and I wish Camp Comfort existed for me back then. Camp Comfort is a grief camp for kids ages six to 12 who lose a loved one. It's been happening for 25 years, and we're still going strong. Founder and program manager Sally Wandling is with us and has a special family to share with you. I'm here today with Julie and her daughter Emmy, and she attended Camp Comfort. We wore masks, 
and they did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Why did you choose Camp Comfort, or how did you hear about Camp Comfort? 16 years ago, my daughters uh, attended our family, had a tragic event happen where we had a, a pretty big loss, and we heard of Camp Comfort through a friend. Recently, we had a major loss in our family, Emmy's sister, and so we returned, and it was an amazing experience for her. Emmy, what was your favorite activity at camp? I liked horseback riding, and I liked fishing, and I liked making a doll for Megan, and I liked the trail ride. It helped Emmy a lot just to be able to relax, to be able to freely talk about um, the death that we experienced and to be able to grieve but in a healthy way and with other people that were experiencing, you know, something similar. Yeah, it made me feel bad for them, but I like going to Camp Comfort. I just absolutely loved the, um, just how they're so closely connected with the camp counselor, um, and that you feel that your, com your child is being really, really taken care of while they're there. So one of my favorite activities, and one we've been doing for 25 years since the camp started, is the Angel Project. Can you tell us a little bit about your angel and how that represented your sister? I found a sticker that was a horse sticker, and I put it on her shirt to remind Megan about uh, when she loved horses. I feel like kids don't know how to grieve, so bringing those fun activities um, and being able to talk about it with other children is, is just a way to be able to reach them. When you're a kid, you just keep everything inside and you don't know how, what to do with those feelings. We've had some rough times in our family, and we were so blessed and grateful to get a scholarship from uh, Camp Comfort. To be able to go to that type of location and have that type of a, I guess, premium camp was just such a blessing. Honestly, I believe that Camp Comfort is the best camp ever. This camp tops it all, just on so many different levels. And we just absolutely love it. And I'm, we're grateful for this wonderful camp. So this next paddle raise is for our smallest and youngest that we care for. Now start looking for that text from AES. It's the same text that was sent to you before the last paddle raise. It says that AES is sending this, the text that will show you the different levels, the different donation levels. So here we go. It's going to work the same way, folks. It's about coming together and making those donations at the level that's right for you. So we're going to start off with a level of $5,000. $5,000 is the full cost for six children to attend the camp. So if $5,000 is the right level for you, here's your chance. Make that donation. We're going to keep moving on, but you could always swing back and make donations at any level that you like for any amount that you like. Our next level is $2,400. $2,400 can have three kids kids attending camp. You're having a direct impact on three children's lives. And I can see that Roger Kelly Brown has made a donation for $2,400 to Camp Comfort. So there we go. Thank you so much. We're now moving to $1,600. $1,600, a full cost for two children to attend camp at $1,600. And by the way, Mr. William Slaughter has just donated $2,400. Thank you so much. At the $1,600 level, we've got Katherine Hassel, we've got John Kirby, we've got Penny Simpson. They're all donating $1,600. Thank you so much. Our next level is $800. $800 is the full cost for one child to attend camp. $800. We've got Ginny. We've got Phil and Barb Hadley. We've got Phil Walters. We've got Another Phil and Barb Hanley. We've got Kurt Harris. We've got Sally. We've got Corey Fryer. We've got Joe Powers. We've got Lori Davis. These are all $800 donations. All right, we're still rolling along. Keep them coming. 
Our next level is $360. $360 sponsorship to enroll two children to attend camp. Miss Wendy Snow, $360. Yes, thank you so much. We're continuing to move on, but remember, at any time, you can go to back to any level, you can create your own level, and you can make those donations happen. $180, $180, $180 sponsorship to enroll one child in camp. We've got Lynn, we've got Andrea Cohen, we've got Susan Phelps, we've got Jennifer Mintel, we've got Jim Chaddix, Chittix. Thank you so much, those are $180 donations. Now I'll tell you what, I heard we had some previous donations. Are you coming back at, that, uh, at the other donations? You told me we had some donations. Another, as you see, look at this. We just got another $2,500 donation from Steve Fitzsimmons. <coughs> A new $500 donation from Gail Sharp. $200 donations from Cheryl O'Toole, from Kathleen Kane, from Camille Schmitz. We've got more $100 donations from Pam Bixter, from Gay Neerman, from Lisa Fowler, from Sharon Ritchie. All right, so you see folks, we are rolling here tonight. So keep them coming. We just got another $800 donation for Camp Comfort from the Gossmiths. Thank you. So keep those donations coming. Remember folks, you have it till 5 p.m. tomorrow, but we want you to jump on it now. Let's build that momentum. Let's keep building on that momentum and let's raise some money. And I'll tell you what, let's give one more stand up. Stand up in your living room or wherever you're watching us from and give yourself a big round of applause because we are raising a lot of money tonight. Yes. All right. We are now going to move on to the live auction. Are you ready for the live auction? We've got three items in the live auction. You're going to be able to enjoy these trips until 2022 and beyond. You're going to have plenty of time to experience these uh, incredible adventures on your own timeline, when you're comfortable, when you're ready to travel. So we've got three special items. So if you're ready, here we go. I'm going to be describing the items, and we're ready to go right now. We're starting off with our first trip to Hawaii. So here we go. Our first trip is to Maui, Hawaii. Enjoy spectacular beaches, gentle ocean breezes, and stunning sunsets at one of the world's most scenic places, the all-sweet Fairmont Kealanai, Maui, on pristine Polo Beach in renowned Wailea. This is Hawaii's only luxury all suite and villa oceanfront resort set on the gorgeous white sands of Wailea. Encompassing 22 acres of tropical landscape, the Fairmount offers authentic Hawaiian cultural experiences and warm personal service to en envelop you in the essence of aloha. In short, the Fairmont is the oasis of dreams. It includes Wailea's three championship 18-hole par 72 golf courses, 11 tennis courts, and boutique shopping. This idyllic resort features a full activities program to keep you busy and provide opportunities for leisure. Snorkeling, stand-up paddle boarding, kayaking, sailing, diving, participating in a myriad of island-wide excursions, or you can just relax by the ocean of one of Maui's the most amazing pools, pampering yourselves with a rejuvenating treatment in the full service Willow Stream Spa. This is a state of the art spa delivering a full menu of locally inspired experiences. There's yoga and fitness areas. Opt for an indulgent massage in one of the outdoor spa cabanas. Now remember folks, this is a one bedroom suite with living room and kitchen. So think about it. If you don't wanna go out every night, you can go stock up the pantry in the kitchen and you can eat in in this beautiful suite. The trip includes six days, five nights accommodations at the Fairmont Kia Lanai. It includes daily complimentary breakfast, all room related taxes. We're going to throw in a $500 Fairmont gift card for spa services. Daily complimentary inspire your energy fitness classes, complimentary pool and beach amenities, a complimentary snorkeling equipment, two sets per suite per day, complimentary Hawaiian canoeing experience, complimentary weekly cultural activities. You will also have a VIP car transportation to shopping, dining, and golf. 
Now remember, folks, this trip is good through December 31st, 2022. December 31st, 2022. So again, you will be able to experience this trip on your own timeline when you're comfortable and when you're ready to travel. So here we go, folks. We're going to start the bidding out for this trip. We are going to start the bidding at $5,000 for this unbelievable experience. And as I could see, Chris and Ginger Payne have started off the bidding at a $5,000 bid. Thank you to the Paynes. They've got it starting at $5,000. So here we go, folks. We're going to go. We're going to go in increments of $200. So that means our next bid is $5,200. So $5,200, folks. Think about that. I hope you heard everything I said. This is an unbelievable experience you have till the end of 2022. Think about that. The end of 2022 to experience this unbelievable top shelf Hawaiian experience, Maui experience. So right now we've got a lead bid of $5,000. We're looking for $5,200. We're looking for $5,200. Do I see it out there in virtual land? I can't look right in your faces, but I know you're ready to go on this trip. So here's what we're going to do, folks. Right now we're holding steady at $5,000. Our next bid is $5,200. You are going to have until 8 p.m. tonight to keep bidding on it. Right now, the Paynes are the lead bidders. They've got the Hawaiian trip, unless someone bids $5,200. And if you bid $5,200, you're gonna be the lead bid, and the Paynes are gonna to have to come back to $5,400. We're gonna be going in increments of $200. So we're ready to move on to our next item, but remember, you have until eight o'clock tonight to continue bidding on the Hawaii trip. All right. So here we go. We're now going to move on to the VIP Broadway experience. Check out these images. All right, with the VIP Broadway experience. This is an unbelievable, inc incredible VIP experience. My Girl to Mean Girls, the spellbinding story of Harry Potter or the mythical quest of Orpheus. You'll get to participate in an intimate chat with two star cast members from the Broadway musical of your choice for an hour of personal success stories, backstage antidotes, and easy conversation about life in the Big Apple and behind the curtain. Each cast member will also perform one to two solo numbers. So whether you choose Just My Imagination, Cell Block Tango, or The Circle of Life, for example, you're in for a sensational treat. Before you say goodbye, you'll have the unique opportunity to ask away during a question answer session. Even from afar, you'll feel the magic of Broadway from the dazzling love story between the palace-bound princess and the peasant in Aladdin to preaching missionaries ringing doorbells in the Book of Mormons, the unforgettable score and undeniable obsession in Phantom of the Opera to the murder and manipulation of Chicago. Miss Doubtfire offers a hysterical and heartfelt story about holding on to the ones you love against all odds or delight in the sold-out smash hit Hamilton, which is most directly about the life and death of Alexander Hamilton, but is more broadly and boldly about America itself, featuring the sounds of hip-hop, rhythm, and blues, soul and show tunes. History brings a new beat to Broadway, from the founding fathers to the fantastically talented actors portraying them. Prepare yourself for an exclusive and revolutionary Manhattan musical experience. Now, this experience is good for up to 10 people, so you and nine of your closest family or friends, a private virtual chat with two stars from a Broadway hit musical, including solo performances per cast member, a free concierge service. They will help you set this up. So just to let you know, folks, here's how it's going to work. Imagine being able to tell your family or your friends, hey, you want to come over to my house and have a VIP Broadway experience? We're going to have Hamilton at our house tonight. So think about how cool that is. You're gonna, so they're going to come. You're going to have a preset time. You could have cocktails, hors d'oeuvres, all kinds of fun things. And then at that preset time, they're going to introduce themselves. You're going to have a question and answer session. You're going to be able to ask them personal questions about what it's like for, if you pick Hamilton, for example, what it's like behind the scenes of Hamilton on Broadway. And then they're going to perform numbers specifically and only for you and your VIP audience in your own home or a residence of your choice. But think about how cool is that and how unique is that in these times that we're in. So here's your chance, an unbelievable opportunity to have an experience with Hamilton or Phantom of the Opera 
or Rent or so many other shows, here's your chance to experience this. I think there's over 17 shows that you get to pick from. So we're going to start the bidding off at $2,000 for this. $2,000 is our opening bid. It looks like we don't have an opening bid right now, so we're looking for a bid of $2,000. So if you can, you put that bid in for $2,000, and you are going to be the most popular person in your neighborhood because you're the one that's going to have a VIP personalized experience with Broadway stars from one of your favorite Broadway plays. So remember, they're going to perform for you specifically just for you. You're going to be able to experience it. $2,000 is your opening bid. So remember, folks, here's your chance. As you can see, this, I can't think of a more unique experience to, ex to experience Broadway, to have fun. Let's check it out. Let's get someone. Remember, we're raising money tonight, so help us out with that. We're looking for an opening bid of $2,000, okay? So remember, you're going to have 8 till 8 o'clock tonight to bid on this item as well. So we're going to move on to the next item, but remember, you can make that opening bid of $2,000, and you're going to have your Broadway VIP experience. Thank you. All right, we're now moving on to our last live auction item of the evening, which is our trip to Los Cabos, Mexico. All right, so here we go. This is a two-bedroom suite at the Grand Mayan Vedanta in Cabo for eight days, but no nights. No, I'm just kidding. For eight days and seven nights. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're listening there, a virtual audience. Purchased on the tip of the Baja Peninsula in one of Mexico's hottest destinations, the Grand Mayan Los Cabos is the fabulous getaway you deserve. Enjoy the immersive blue of twilight around a floating fire pit. Ease into a luxurious treatment at Brio Spa, or simply marvel at edge of the world views from nowhere else. The Vedanta Resort in Los Cabos is a members only location. Since this is a member certificate, guess what? You can go anytime you like. This is a perfect experience for two couples or a family because remember, this is a two bedroom spa. A true, it's the Grand Mayan Suite featuring two bedrooms with two king size beds and two bathrooms, a living room area with dining table and kitchen, a private terrace with private plunge pool. This property could sleep four to six adults comfortably. Relax in a gorgeous and sophisticated setting by a triple-tiered expanse of crystal-clear pools stretching out between swaying palms, culminating on the shores of a brilliant white sand beach. There is even an infinity pool overlooking the Sea of Cortez. Experience Cabo's newest and most talked-about eateries. Enjoy challenging play and spectacular sights on your own nine-hole golf course. Spend your vacation dancing, learning, exploring, adventuring, and experiencing all that the large offerings of activities are present at this property. Also, the, this is good through March of 2023, folks. March of 2023. So again, you will experience this on your timeline when you're ready to travel. Ground transportation is included from the airport to your, re your resort of choice. And remember, folks, I think they have some tequila available at this property as well. So here we go, folks. So we're looking at an opening bid of $3,000. And yes, we have an opening bid of $3,000. So our next bid is $3,200. We're looking for $3,200. Yes! Ray Crunk. Ray Crunk at $3,200. So we're still moving. Now we're at $3,400. So where was my original bidder? Where was my $3,000 bidder? Because we've got Ray Kroc at $3,200. We're looking for $3,400. Do we have $3,400? Looking for $3,400. We've got $3,000. We've got $3,200. We're looking for $3,400. Right now, Ray Kroc is the lead bid. Ray Kroc is the lead bid at $3,200. So we're looking for $3,400. Do we have $3,400? Remember, we're open until 8 o'clock tonight. So we've got some time to place those bids. But right now, Ray Kroc is our lead bid at $3,200. All right, so here we go, folks. We're going to move on. But remember, all three of these live auction bids are still available until 8 o'clock tonight. And guess what? Broadway still doesn't have a bidder. So you could be the first. You could steal the Broadway package for $2,000. So think about that. You could sneak in there and steal that. 
So here we go, folks. Remember, our next bid on Hawaii is $5,200. Our next bid on Mexico is $3,400. So here we go. I'm going to now send it back to Mark, I think. Mark, you're going to come on back, and we're going to go from there. But everybody, give yourselves a big round of applause. Remember, you can do, make those donations until 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Thank you. How about that energy? Thank you, Jim. How about that energy? He didn't say it, but let's get ready to donate Jim Burtz. So a heartfelt thank you. And also to Carrie, Carrie Yeager, our instrumental eminent commander here. And not only Carrie, but her entire team. If you've not been onto the website, check it out and see all the bright faces that are out there. I just learned this past couple of weeks that Mount Evans touches 400 people a day with the, with the caring that they offer. The gift of care that you bring to all of us in the mountain communities, it's invaluable. We've got one last mission moment from the staff to share, so uh, let's please take a look. We did have a very special person, Katie Matthewman, who is here with me in this picture. She was handicapped and she had many struggles in life, but she overcame them and had grace and dignity. When she was turning 29, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. We were all concerned that maybe she wouldn't make it to the Big 30. So we had a Big 30th birthday for her, and it's just heartwarming. She was hit with so many obstacles in life, and even in the face of death, she loved life. She was a blessing to everybody that ever met her. She was just part of our family. She'll always be with us. Hey, these moments underscore the reason we're all here tonight. And as Jim said, you can still make a donation and you can still participate in the silent and live auction. All the money we raise is gonna to go to support our in-home health care for our mountain community. And now is the final treat. We have a few more songs from the special Tunisia concert, and then we'll be having some closing comments from Carrie.
right, hey, listen, I'm back here. Jim Burr's the auctioneer. I know you're out there thinking like, oh my gosh, I thought we were finished with this guy already. But no, you're almost finished with me. I just want to remind you of a couple things. I want to remind you that you have until 8 o'clock tonight to continue bidding on not just the three live auction items, but you have until 8 o'clock tonight to also bid on the silent auction items. They close at 8 o'clock tonight, so keep that in mind. You also have until 5 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday, 5 p.m., not a.m., 5 p.m. to continue making donations. Now, I have a question. I want to know something right now. I want to know if Pete and Meryl Sabeth are still in the house. Are they in the house? Because I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something about the Sabeths. The Sabeths have made a donation for $10,000. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much to Pete and Merrill. I want to tell also, we have a couple more. Barry and Michelle Schroeder. Barry and Michelle Schroeder, they made a $1,000 donation. Yes! So you see, folks, they're still the donations are still coming, and that's why we want to tell you to please keep making those donations. You have till 5 p.m. tomorrow, but make them now. While it's, it's on your mind, here's your chance to make it. Now, I also just want to make a reminder. I know that Ruth, Ruth had bid an opening bid of $3,000 on that Mexico trip. So right now, Ray is ahead by $200. I just want to make sure that we're not forgetting, Ruth, we're not forgetting about this unbelievable Mexico experience. You can bid right now at $3,400 or anybody else can bid at $3,400. So once again, thank you all. You should be so proud of yourselves. You should all be standing up and cheering in your homes because we raised so much money. You've joined us tonight for our first ever virtual experience with fundraising. Once again, thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you, and right now I'm going to send it back to Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for another great auction. It was so fun and exciting to have you here tonight. And thank you, Mark, as being our MC tonight. It was great. Thank you to our current and all of our past board members for your work and thoughtfulness going throughout the years. And thank you to our sponsors and our beloved volunteers. And last but certainly not least, thank you to our staff, our Mount Evans family. We are together tonight to support you as you care for all of us, our friends and neighbors in our time of need. Most importantly, thank you to all of you for your generosity tonight and throughout the years. Because of you, our heart is in the home. Have a good night. Gonna make it rain whenever I want me to.
Time to 